changes of central tendency. Okay, this is one topic. Changes of central tendency. Okay, this is one first chapter. This is part of your uh, topic. Okay, so in there we discuss about first meaning. We discuss about median, median. and we discuss about mode. mode. Then we discuss about geometric mean. Geometric mean. And then we discuss about harmonic mean. And then we discuss about what? One another point, but that's we discussing later. But this five points is very really important. Once questions is coming, discuss about measures of central tendency. Then you can talk about these five points. Okay. So what is the measures of central tendency? Measures of central tendency tell us center value of the data. If I ask, if I ask. What is the average height of the students in this class? So, how will you collect? You will collect the individual height of the students in this class. Then, you will add all the values. Then, divide by the total number of the students. You can find out the average. Okay, you can see on and average 5.6 which are the average height of the students. Okay, same you can do the weight. But there are certain methods. Okay, so for mean calculation, we can use different types of the formula, which is summation i is equal to one to n x i divided by n. It is noted by x bar. Yeah. And then same. And this this x i you can write down x one x x two plus x three. Plus x for that is up to xn. Yes. Yeah. N. And that xn means mm. there is total yeah. number of students yeah. in the class. Mm. Suppose there are 20 students in the class, so we have refers to n2. Yeah. These are x1 refers to students number 1, this is students number 2, students number 3, and students number up to 20. One. You will add, you will add all the values and divide it by. Class. So this is the basic things you are aware. Some of you are aware, some of you are not aware. So this basic steps we can calculate. So there are certain examples. So we discuss example. Before that, I will tell you one important point. So all the things, whatever I am speaking, everything is on channel. You can take the notes from there. The other point is that you have to understand what is important things. Okay. So before this, I was talking about the research. Okay? So in research, first of all, you need to understand from where you will begin and where you will close your research. So that is known as the process. What are the process you need to involve in the research? That's points I will tell you. So find this research process. Research process. Because if you are going to study the biostatistics of the research process, if anyone is asking you what is the research process from where you will begin and where you will close the study. So you should know. Okay? So there are certain points. First point is known as Conceptual phase. Conceptual phase. So we will divide research process in three parts. Okay? And second is empirical phase of the research process. Empirical phase of the research process. And third one is known as Analytical phase of the research process. Okay, once you are going to begin 
the research so there are certain classes and that classes we are going to divide in three phases okay so first phase this matter is already on the video okay so you can take the materials from there here you need to understand okay so first phase divide conceptual phase and conceptual by name is clear what are the concept how do you conceptualize your research process and then we will come to the dynamical so in in a conceptual phase there are certain points so point number 1 is formulating the research problem as i said first you have to identify your problems what is your problem once you know the problem then you will try to find out the solution right so first point known as the formulation formulation of the research research problem okay once you know the research problem then you have to explore whatever topic you have suppose you are going to talk, talk about imaging sciences or you are going to talk about x-rays good images or bad images you are going to talk about mri ct scans so that's the problem you have to first identify and then related to second points you have to find out the, you have to do the literature review literature Review. So now, point is, what is the literature review? As I said, go search on Google, try to find out the published article on X-ray, on imaging sciences, or on the MRI, CT scan. So that articles you have to read, okay? And latest article, suppose if you are find out a problem. Related to that problem, at least you try to find out thirty published article. Okay, and read all the articles. And after that, you develop some hypothesis. Hypothesis, you know, sometimes in routine class, you don't know, we have to say that no, I am talking hypothetically. Maybe it is not actually true. We generally will discuss with you, right? So these are the points you need to uh, find out with the help of the literature review. So that is known as third process is what developing the hypothesis. Developing, developing the hypothesis. Okay. So these three points come under the conceptual phase of research process. Okay. Then you will go for second phase, and in second phase you you will design study design. You have to find out the study design so you can complete the study design. What's your study design? Study design is how you are going to collect the data and who, what, who to be the uh, subject of your study. Is you are taking the patients, are you are going to take the images from the X-rays, from CT scans. So that's you have to design your process about your research problem. And then once your study design is clear, then you will go further. Determining the sample size. Determining the sample sample size. And I said once you have obtained the research problem, then you have to determine the sample size. How many patients you can select to your study, to your research problem? Like you are going to do over one images, images, X-rays. Then you have to find out how many images required for your studies. Okay, I hope you are getting the points. What I am telling you. So these are the process of the 
uh, your research and then was then next points you can go for data collection data collection data collection means to identify suppose you are identify the patient number one and you are going to take the x-ray of that patient in different positions okay so how you position so that parts you have to decide this will design then you have to think about how you can collect the data or information from the patients so these three points you can do in the empirical phase of the such process then we go for the next analytical phase of the process so in that phase we will do analysis data analysis data analysis once you do the data analysis then you will go for hypothesis testing hypothesis testing and once you did the hypothesis test testing then you go for generalization of the results Generalization of the results, and then we will go for report writing. Report writing and result attribution.